Welcome to another video explaining the universe using the particle model. Today's video is about the speed of the magnetic field versus C. It's a kind of an interesting question because not many people talk about the speed of the magnetic field. Yes, and I've talked about man-made laws, man-made constants. Last time, the speed of light versus C. Today, speed of magnetic field versus C. And then I'll be talking about others next. But I need to go back to the last video about the light versus C. One of the points I failed to mention, and, and that's when you got, got to the uh, point in the video where I explained that to you there's an agreement as to what the value of C is. And it, uh, although it's not arbitrary, it's uh, based on measurements, and it's probably the average value of, uh, of many very good measurements of the speed of light. Nonetheless, they, they landed up with a, an exact value for the speed of C. And there's a good reason for that, actually. All instruments that use the speed of light to perform a calculation must have a value for C that is the same. Uh, the calculations must be consistent between instruments. And the only way to guarantee that when you're making precise measurements is to have the same value. Uh, for example, a digital oscilloscope uses the uh, exact value or uses a value of C, presumably this ex precise exact value, to calculate the frequency of a signal based on the measurement of the wavelength, the time, based on time. To measure the wavelength, they all must use the same standard for C, and the same standard for the second, and that way they're correlated. So there is a reason, even though the value itself may not be represent what's really happening. When you measure with an oscilloscope, it may not be that value, but at least the instruments will will be uh, comparable. You, you can compare them. Well, let's look up and see what they say about the speed of a magnetic field. So I looked that up, and whoops, first answer. Uh, they talk about the electromagnetic wave, EM wave. The speed of the electromagnetic wave is certainly known and is defined as exactly 299,792,458 two meters per second in a vacuum, the same as the speed of light. This was an answer by Scott Wilbur, president of ComScree, Quantum World Corporation. Don't know who that was, but that was the top answer when I looked it up on the internet. It's defined, not measured, defined, but he's talking about electromagnetic waves. What about the magnetic field? What about the magnetic field around a magnet or an electromagnet? Well, I looked up another one. Quora, one of the uh, ones I watch very carefully, see what they're saying. And Quora answers, uh, your question is not so much about the field as it is about the magnetic force. So. Uh, instead of answering the, about the speed of the, the field, he is going to talk about the force. At least this is how I prefer to interpret electromagnetism and is how classical EM was put together. The magnetic force is a long-range force. Consider then two magnetic charges called A and B. Note that there are no magnetic monopoles that have been discovered, and magnetic force is simply the force between two moving elect electric charges. Anyway, particle A can be turned on and off, and we have control. 
Particle A is held in place, particle B is free to move, and if we bring particle A into existence, then at that instant, does B feel a force? Answer is no. All long-range forces are limited to the speed of light. Oh, you know, so, uh, you know, they're... Uh, they're, they're defining magnetic force as a long-range force, and if, if it's a long-range force, they are limited to the speed of light. Can't go faster. It's not saying what it is, and just saying you can't go faster. And which you could also call the speed of action or the speed of force. So some amount of time later, particle A, A's long-range force will affect B. Well, it's not the speed. Uh, he's saying it's finite, but fast, but not faster than light. That's uh, part of relativity. But here's an interesting the one that I came about. And, and, and this gentleman asked, how fast does a magnetic field travel in a magnetic material like soft iron? Not an electromagnetic wave, a magnetic field. He insists. Okay, guys, you don't seem to be answering the questions like the previous two I showed. I don't need a precise answer. The qualitative behavior is what I'm after. So the people, uh, person answering suggests this, a, a thought experiment. Imagine I have a wooden bench, uh, on a wooden bench, a piece of conducting but unmagnetized iron a railroad track 10 feet long. I have a strong permanent magnet and I shall attach to one end of the rail very quickly to make a step change in the magnetic field in the rail. At the other end of the rail, a regular compass or magnetic detector, the needle swings towards the rail and indicating when it has become magnetized. To start the experiment, I attach the permanent magnet to one end of the rail. Sometime later, the compass a needle announces the arrival of the magnetic field on the far end. Interesting experiment. Uh, somehow you, uh, you time it. You maybe you take a video of this and you quickly attach it. Boom, the needle moves. And you count the number of frames on your film to see what the timing is. Uh, come on, Bob. Well, <clears throat> here's, a, here's a, his experiment with a compass needle. And by the way, you, there is a, the Earth has a magnetic uh, field, and uh, it, if nothing else around it besides that, <clears throat> this needle is going to point north. So you've got to set this such that this is pointing north, this is east-west, Here's a magnet, standard magnet, and I've added something to his experiment where you've got a, uh, a shield, actually a conical one. I don't show it that way, but you need to shield it in all directions. And the red part of this is conductive so that the magnetic field is going to come here, hit this, and move back and come around maybe all the way out and around, really modified, and comes down and around all the way around and back this way, blocking it from going this way. Conical in all directions. So my thought was, you leave the magnet in place, you leave all of this in place, <coughs> and you have a mechanism to, to quickly separate this part of the cone from this part of the cone. you got to a cone like this, and you're going to uh, pull it apart. And of course, as soon as it, it pulls apart, it'll then the magnetic field will come through here, hit this, and flip it. Well, <clears throat> you got to fight the north field, the the Earth's magnetic field. Uh, it's not going to move instantly. So even if you got this to work, the um, the time by the time you see this move, uh, not only will it have included the time to be conducted here, but uh, it's uh, how strong is it when it first gets there, and and when does it start moving? 
uh, I expect this needle to actually, the red to point to the left, just like this is pointing to the left and the uh, south end to point the other direction. Well, that's one possibility, but uh, you can see how it, uh, it's a little bit iffy, had a different thought. What about, what about a uh, photodiode or a, a, a photodiode? This is a light, a light detector. Now, in the particle model, light is made out of G1 particles and the magnetic field is made out of G1 particles. So as soon as you open this cone and let it go through, you're going to get a step function from a, a, a stream from no G1s flowing here at this detector here to a whole bunch. And so you're going to get a, a step function there and when it reaches over here, you put a photo detector, you get a step function here. You connect your detector to a, a, an oscilloscope. A channel A is on, the, on this one, channel B is on this one, and then you uh, set it up, you pull your shield away, you get a, a step function on channel A, a step function on channel B, and there ought to be a time delay. Don't need a compass, needle. Possible experiment, maybe someone you could finally measure, because you see in the previous examples, three answers to the question. Nobody ever said how they measured it. They assumed, well, magnetic fields go along with light because it's an electromagnetic field, and therefore it's the same as C. They, they, they aren't showing how to measure it. Whether this works or not, it, it, it may take a lot to get it work. Maybe you get an answer out of it. But the magnetic field is real. You know, we can feel wind. We can measure the speed of the wind with an anemometer. Uh, we know it's real because it's the atmosphere moving, putting pressure on the surface of, of your boat, uh, your sail of your boat. We can also feel the repulsion of two magnets. You need to put uh, north and north as, or south to south of a magnet and you try to push them together. You know, there's something there. You can feel it. It's real. It's made of something. And we can, uh, it, it says, here I said we can't measure the speed of the magnetic field. Well, maybe we can, maybe we can't. But we can make a, a good guess about it anyway, even before we do the uh, uh, experiment. Here's a, here's a case where we use a, an electromagnet instead of a, uh, a straight magnet. And uh, you, you got the uh, current flowing this way, but in our case, the G1 particles flow the other way. <coughs> And as soon as you close the switch on this circuit, this thing builds up. Well, the problem here is uh, you can use this as the source, but it takes time for this to build up. There's a, a time constant. Normally, there's a resistor in here. The inductance of the coil and the resistor give you a time constant. It takes at least four time constants for the field to build up. And the where the magnetic needle would uh, needle would sense it. Uh, well, that's not going to that's not going to work. But uh, there is an interesting point about uh, that I'll talk about later. Well, here's the my the particle model explanation for a magnetic field in the first place. This is uh, similar to the slide I just showed. G one's coming out through a resistor. And you have a copper wire here, uh, and I maintain that the, the, the G1 particles do not flow in a straight line. They flow in somewhat a spiral shape uh, path. And the, the only thing available to, cre to create this magnetic field, which is the red line, it's uh, up, over, back, down, forward, up, back, down, forward, 
uh, it was also in a spiral fast. And so the only thing that you can get, the only thing that can make the magnetic field is the G1. And what is the speed of the G1? Velocity of the G1 orbital in the battery is the velocity of the magnetic field developed around the copper wire. It's not measuring it, but it's, uh, in this case, I'm not going to the electromagnetic wave or, 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 or light to uh, explain it. I'm saying that the only source for the thing that you feel when you when you try to push the magnets together and they are fighting you the only source for that whatever is, is there is the electron or the g1 particle that has no charge and it is moving is it moving at c no it's the average velocity of the g1 particle in the battery whatever that is. It may not be C. It may be slower than C. could be faster than C. Well, one of the uh, ways you uh, learn about a magnet itself, that was uh, more about a, a wire creating, creating a magnetic field around a wire or through an, an, uh, a coil. But when, they, when you manufacture them, this is from a, uh, explaining the process itself, after manufacturing is complete, that is, they've built the material, the magnet requires charging to produce an external magnetic field. You want to charge it, get it give it its magnetic field. This can be accomplished in a solenoid, a hollow cylinder into which various magnets, magnet sizes and shapes can be placed, or with fixtures designed to impart a unique pattern. And so here's a coil again, and, and you can imagine taking material and pushing it down in here, setting it for a while. And whatever the speed of this is, and the, the particle model says this is the average orbital speed of the G1, is flowing around here, and that's what's going to be flowing through the magnet. That's what's going to be trapped when you take it out. It, it all, that all comes from the same source. Okay, and so the average velocity of the G1 orbital is the velocity of the magnetic field. I'm just showing you this example again, saying that if you can measure the time from this detector to this detector. By the way, I may not have been a little clear about it. Why would a photo detector uh, respond to a... Uh, uh, to a magnetic field, and I, I may have said it, but if I said it too fast and you didn't get it, they're both made out of G1 particles. And so what you would get as soon as you pull the shield away, you would get, you would go from zero G1s to a very large number of G1s. And the photo detector ought to be able to see that. See it there, see it here, and the, uh, the measurement of that speed from this point to this point, if you actually got a, an oscilloscope with that could measure that time difference, <coughs> you take this length divided by that time and you've got the speed of the magnetic field that you've actually measured. My name is Bob DeHilster and I am your Particle Model Guru. If you have a question, ask Particle. Thank you for your attention.